Hi, I'm Malcolm, and today what we're going to do is have a look at the technique that I use to create a seascape. Well, we start off after we've done a very simple six line pencil drawing, sketching with very strong colour using a half inch flat brush. And here we just want to get intense colour down straight onto the canvas as fast as we can in the areas where we want it. Um, the only exception to this is the background to the sky because that is the very devil to go over again after you've done it so I suggest that you keep that as a flat plane of blue or however you want the background tone of your sky to be before you put the cloud colours on and you can see here just how loose this is it's just very loose sketching with some dark lines and some filled in colour areas um, throwing a bit of sky colour onto the sea put the distant hills in got all the cloud colours in and then immediately after that we're on to stage 2 which is really just to tighten up the sketch blend in the clouds a bit so the colours are less obvious and less glary and I've blended a little bit of white and a little bit of grey um, I use Payne's Grey quite a lot. Um, I've also increased the strength of the reds down in the bottom right hand corner. The cliff itself is, is red because I want it to come out as warm and if I put a red undercoat on it I know it will come out with quite a warm feel and it will pop into the foreground. And as you can see I've started to draw the cloud down over the mountain a bit and that's going to get quite a bit more cloudy later on. I've also darkened up the distant hills and the reason I've done that is I just don't want to lose the actual shape of them. There's a bit of work going on in the sea area but not very much at this particular time. I've just put some green where the eye of the wave is going to be. Um, I've started to suggest a few distant waves but nothing more than that at this particular stage. And this step really is all about just establishing shapes. Now stage three um, and I suggest that you wait a few hours to let the paint gel a bit before you do this but basically you adjust the colour values by mixing on the canvas a little bit of grey or Prussian blue or browns or whites or, or whatever and at this stage I've also added in I decided I wanted a kind of a sunburst effect over the top of the mountain so I've added in the basis for that um, I've also darkened up a lot of areas like this wave in the foreground I've darkened that up considerably and the main reason I've done that is I know that when I come to put light things over then you know it's going to get lighter and I don't want it to be too light so here we are we're adjusting the colour values and we've we've also added a bit, a bit more cloud over the top of this mountain and we've drawn it across so we're making sure that we can actually still see a bit of mountain through the cloud otherwise it might just look like a, a flat top mountain which it isn't. Um, Jura the mountain in the centre has got quite a pronounced peak and now what we're doing is, is we're blending a bit more and we're putting some more colour from the sky into the distant sea so that there's some reds and some pinks as well as a bit of white well not quite white it's a very very light pink actually um, we've also started to drop a little bit of mist into the right hand side of the mountain um, just really to test out what it looks like and I like the way that looks so I'm going to do some more a bit later when everything's dried so here we are at stage 4 and I've allowed it to dry overnight and 
I'm adding some more cloud. Now, not only have I added some more cloud over the top of the mountain, but if you look back, you'll also see that on the right-hand side, the clouds have got a lot more complex. Um, I've added some mist. There's like a bank of fog across the front of the mountain and extending off to the left-hand side of the page. I've also started to bring in um, some mist into the distant mountain area and I've actually obscured the distant mountains at one point um, as they would be in, in real life and so I've made it look like the mist goes around the mountains and goes up into this valley pass in the distance. Now I've kept these distant mountains and indeed even the mid-ground mountains still very loose and, and quite blurry. Um, if you find you're too tight with them you can do a kind of stippling motion with a small round brush that will help spread the edges out a little bit but you don't want to do it too much otherwise it will start to look like the mist or the clouds. You just need to get it just right so that you've got a blended edge but not too much. I've also um, added a bit of yellow in there. Now I've started to work on some of the sea detail on this wave as well. So you can see um, I've put in some of the foam that is actually in the back of the wave, um, which is dark. Um, and if you look at a, a painting or a drawing of um, a wave like this, you'll see that you can actually see through it. And that means that the foam on the back of the wave casts a shadow into the wave. And that basically is what I've put on there. I've also added some dark lines um, into the far sea just to look like waves and I've boosted this sun effect quite a lot um, it's been my experience with these that they have to be very nearly the brightest area of the painting so if you can manage to put several coats of white but do it kind of erratically so that um, as you can see you've got sort of some areas of it that are white some areas of it that are a bit yellow um, and you just can't get that sort of effect in one go you have to really let it dry I've also added strengthened the um, distant land on the left a little bit um, and strengthened the white cloudy area. Um, also the, the right hand, sorry, the left hand side of the mountain um, was a little bit too blurred so I got out a bit of Payne's grey and some violet and mixed a bit of violet and I've uh, strengthened that up so that what we've got is a warm side to that mountain and it's also reasonably well defined. I've also gone and I've put even more sky colour into that distant sea because I felt it needed it. Um, and now I've added some more detail into the sea area. I've added some foam. Um, it's too hard at the moment. It needs blending out a bit. But I know if I do it at this stage while it's wet, I'll just get a mess. So I've put it on. I'm leaving it for a while. I've also added, uh, past the distant rocks on the right there, I've added in some pure white into there. So at the moment the only areas with pure white is there, the sun area and some highlights on the foam. Now with the distant um, waves, some of them, I've added some little suggestions of areas where the waves are breaking and the way I've done this is I actually put the colour I actually put a slightly not quite white on with a palette knife and that comes out as just a line which never looks right so what you end up doing is just using a small brush and pushing the paint around with the edge of the brush until you get what looks like a piece of foam um, that's what works for me anyway 
I've also added some more bits of foam around the front of the main wave where there's some small rocks and uh, I've put in some more sky colour on the right hand side of the uh, mid-ground sea there and now it's dried a bit more I've gone back to the sunburst and I've added even more I've added another coat of white on top so now you can see it's it's um, more white than it was but you can still see there's a lot of variation in there there's a, a lot of uh, lumpy areas of yellow I've also strengthened the top of the cloud where the sunburst would be hitting it so that now is is not quite pure white but it's very very close and some of the other clouds around I felt I needed to strengthen the highlights on as well so I've done that I've put some more um, purple mix onto the left hand side of the mountain and I've boosted the amount of detail there is on the clouds on the right hand top um, I've made sure that everything there is nice and warm um, and I've also changed the shape of some of the clouds now this is a good time to actually look at some reference pictures because they're actually quite specific shapes that go into the tops of clouds um, and uh, it's worthwhile putting a few of those in copied from reference because they'll make the picture look a lot more realistic also what's important is the shape of the negative areas between the clouds like up there at the top right there's a bit like the boot shape on Italy um, now the sea area has dried a little bit enough to accept some more solid colour I've added a few tiny touches of pure white into the foam um, I've also darkened up this front wave even further and I've added in some areas where the light is shining through apart from the main sort of eye of the wave and I've painted those in um, leaving the dark uh, foam in the background in the back of the wave as a negative now I've gone back to this uh, splash area around these rocks um, I've added a few pure white highlights and I've also created an area of disturbed water in front of the rocks just by suggesting it first of all with a, with a, a light bluey grey on a small brush um, and then following that up with a somewhat heavier white uh, I've also taken some of the mist over the cliff in the uh, foreground because at the end of the day whenever there's a lot of splashing like that there's a lot of spray in the air um, so it's quite a good idea to represent that somehow but not to overdo it and now I've allowed it to dry overnight and I've come back and I've decided that I need to do a few final adjustments and this is quite often the case with the painting uh, the hills look too far forward that is to say the hills in the background the main mountain was too dark although I was happy with the shapes and so on and so forth so what I did was I took a light blue thin glaze and just put it over the areas that I wanted to recede into the background further which is the very distant mountains the small mountain on the right and the main mountain in the centre and um, it's a process called scumbling where you just put a a lighter colour over the dark and it just knocks it back into the background a little bit and I also added a little bit more purple into the sky tones at the same time I have to apologise here for the colour reproduction of my camera it's not particularly good um, as soon as I go into close up for some bizarre reason the colours will change Now also, as well as a light, essentially lightening some of those details to knock them further back into the background, I've darkened some areas near the foreground uh, to make them stronger. Typically, um, the area of the main wave I've, I've darkened underneath it to represent both rocks behind the wave, which is what's causing it to break, 
and also the shadows underneath it. I've also added a, a few more transparent areas uh, towards the left. I've added a bit of red colour in the sea behind it because I felt it needed it. And um, some of the highlights that I put in earlier that were pure white, I decided they were far too white. And I've gone over them with the uh, light blue mix as I used for the hills. And some of them I've even gone over with the uh, dark mix that I used in the bottom of the waves. And this process of, of adjusting the painting so that the painting as a whole looks kind of better is very much hit or miss. But the thing to remember about glazing is you can always wipe it off again with a cloth if you don't like it. So I'm going to call this finished now, um, although I'm willing to bet I'll probably go back to it in about a month and tiddle around a bit more. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please like and subscribe. And I'll hope to see you again soon. Thank you all very much.